I'm not sure how long it has been, but it has been quite the emotional roller coaster for Hish and Yuna. A moment ago, they all cried for their captor's demise, creating a funeral or the wake sensation. Now, everyone is lost with words, as if they have seen a ghost. Regardless, Shin has returned. Back for war. Or perhaps not. The last chapter's ending was emotional, yet comical with everyone losing their mind. Here, it is different. Everyone is giving in to the fact their captain is alive. The only comical part is Shin's confusion. He's legitimately lost on what's going on. Either he doesn't realize how much his comrades adore him, or he wasn't expecting a huge gathering. Either way, it's hilarious, yet satisfyingly moving. Everyone pounces on Shin to show their sign of relief. The way they're acting resembles to something fangirls would do when a male idol appears in public. Sosui claws Shin's face for some reason. I guess he's really sensitive. The part with Anne is hilarious. As much as emotional it was for him, he's yelling at Shin's manhood out of all places. Laughed at Shin ruining the mood with that notion. Dene still wants to hit him for good measure. The man lives with the fist to solve everything. The tone changes to more touching feeling when Ten embraces Shin. She was the last one to cry for him in public. Also, they have a long history together since chapter 2. The whole scene was a really good feel moment. However, Kyokai has yet to awaken from her ritual. We clearly saw her gone through the portal, thanks to Shosa and Kyogai. It shouldn't take long for her to rise, but the truth is, she's meeting an old friend one more time. The whole discussion between Kyokai and Shone is very interesting to me. To begin with, Kyokai just realized why the technique was forbidden. It's common sense when a life is literally on the line. I forgot her brain process can be slow at times. Nevertheless, she did pull the unthinkable to not only save her life, but coming back alive. Granted, it's thanks to those two guys, but it's the camaraderie that ultimately overcame the odds. Life or death? The question in my mind remains, was it necessary to pull the scene when Shin was meant to stay alive? The answer soon follows. While it's not what I was looking for at first, it is nice for two old friends chatting, much like previous chapter with Shin and Hyo. In this case, however, the focus is on Kyokai's possible love interest. She did go out of her way to sacrifice her life for Shin, so that should mean something. If that wasn't proof enough, she claims she wouldn't do the same for Bihei if he were to die. I hate to say it, but I laughed. Poor Bihei somehow gets insulted from everywhere even in afterlife. By this point, it is clear Kyokai is unaware of her feelings for Shin. This is a necessary step for her to grow up. After all, this is the same person who didn't know how childbirth works. She doesn't know what exactly she grew interest in Shin, dating back when they first met. Bottom line, she is not ready, but is a first step for romance. Poor Shonen for knowing her best friend as a love interest. Yet here she is, dead with no lover. That has to sting, even as a spirit. It's nice and all, but the answer I was searching for happens next. Although Kyokai escaped death, it's not without consequences. I knew Haru-sensei wouldn't let this moment just to be heartfelt reunion with the dead, even if it was nice. Kyokai's lifespan has shortened, and it's not said by how much which gives fans a worrisome feeling for the future. It doesn't end there. She can no longer perform the revival technique due to her weakened ember of life. Aside from short life, the real kicker is some of her techniques are either no longer available or will be much weaker. Everything here intrigued me. Her shortened lifespan can bring out the suspense. Rather than expecting her to live until old age, she can die really young. That is unless the good news revolve with her time span, but more on that later. Thankfully, the revival technique can only be used once, dead or alive. This eliminates the idea of constant use, which in hindsight would ruin the series incredibly. Finally, the fact her techniques have downgraded is great from writing perspective. 
If you recall my earlier review, I stated that she and Hulken were the only ones with magical techniques or immeasurable strengths. Now with Hulken out of the picture, you would think writing her off will balance it out. Instead, she returned in a much weaker state. For those who are more interested in realistic combat, she can fit in well. He Shin Unit no longer has his Hulk. Imagine when another godlike man appears, the stakes will be greater. All in all, this was a great move. Sad for her, but great nonetheless. The other interesting part is left unknown. Shonen does have good news, too in fact, but it was cut off before we get to hear it. I don't know what it could be. Maybe the lifespan isn't as severe. Maybe it has to do with Shin. It's something for fans to speculate. Kyokai returns to life with Shin recollecting his time in the afterlife. Part of it that is, he doesn't remember much, but that's fine for her. I'm not sure if she's trying to hide the consequences or something about the good news. The worst that can happen is an interruption. So this is cue for Moten and Ohan to show up. As expected, they arrive when Shin is awake not aware that he has died earlier. So they take it as him dying, but not death. This could mean the report won't tell the story of his revival. I would have liked to see the reaction back at Chin. Anyway, one guy yells at Hisha Unit to get back to the battlefield. So much for taking their feelings into consideration. In his defense, it is war, so gotta keep moving. They do shove him away, so this was a sweet payback. For those who are wondering if Shin will take on Ribako, I believe the next part answers the question. He tries to get back to the fight, but his body can't take it anymore. In other words, he's officially done. Taking out Hoken should be enough to warrant a general title. It better happen. His lack of memory reinforced the notion of his battle against Hoken was mostly done while unconscious. Still incredible to say the least. What's also incredible is the status report that highly suggests the arc is close to the end. Moten fills in the details that Chin has missed out. To summarize, Chin army took over Ribako's headquarter, but he and his army have escaped. Not just them, but so as Bonanji, Kisui, and Urai with some of their men. Chin army wasn't coordinated to chase after them, so they withdrew without a problem. I got to appreciate Shin for taking the blame for Hisha Yuna's fault instead of blaming them for their emotions running high. A leader taking the blame. Rarely you get those kind of people. The news sounded nothing but bad. However, it's the opposite. When it comes down to it, Zhao army has completely retreated. Everyone went back to Gyo, their final stronghold. Osen army and the rest will chase them down. Tally up everything. It comes down to one conclusion. Chin's victory is at hand. It's no longer an if, it's a when. If this is true, then for the next couple of chapters, we will be witnessing the fall of Zhao in action. The narrative might turn into a sad defeat. Maybe Ribiko has something, but Hoken was his trump card. Now what? The clock is ticking. I thought this chapter was intriguing and satisfying. I know some fans didn't appreciate the magical revival, but honestly, I was left satisfied. I find the future potential for Kyokai appealing. I look forward to her next fight in her weaker state. I sound like a sadist, but it can create a new development for her to deal with. The breaking news left me satisfying. It's hard to believe this arc is ending very soon. It's been well over two years. Ribiko must have something to counter. Otherwise, it was a good fight while it lasted. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. I have heard the spoilers made it seem like the arc has skipped straight to the ending. Instead, it only implies the end is near. But it is guaranteed. At least that's how Moten put it. Regardless, I do believe we're going to see Zhao's downfall in motion. As sad it is for Ribiko and everyone. I'm looking forward to seeing it. What do you think of this chapter? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.